Hello, in this Vulkan video, we are going to look at the vertex buffer creation stuff. So at the moment, if we run it, it'll go through the validation layers and it won't actually be showing the triangle anymore from the previous video. And what we're going to do now is sort of wrap a little bit up so we can actually show the triangle again. So the vertex buffers, they're, you know, the regions, not, not actually, let me rephrase that, buffers in Vulkan are regions, you know, of memory that, you know, you can store any sort of data that you want on the graphics card. This will allow us to, you know, pass in these vertices that we created right here. So we can have it dynamically from the code and potentially even from the user instead of having it defined in the actual shader file, which obviously is hard coded. And there's, there's very little flexibility that you have with that. So yeah, to do this, not that you know complex. First of all, we'll scroll down to where we've got our variables. We'll put it after the command pool. We need a couple of objects. We need a VK buffer. Uh, it's literally just a VK buffer. There we go. And we're gonna call it vertex buffer or underscore vertex buffer. I'm gonna have a VK device memory and I'm gonna call this underscore vertex buffer memory like so. So now that we've got those objects sorted, we're gonna to go to the init Vulkan method and after create command pools, but before the create command buffers method, we're gonna call create vertex buffer method which we will be implementing ourselves very soon hence the errors so we don't need to worry about it scroll down to clean up after we clean up the swap chain but before we clean up everything else we're going to clean up that vertex buffer and the vertex buffer memory objects so vk destroy buffer and you specify the device as always the vertex buffer and you know a callback if you want to I'm going to put no pointer and I'm going to put VK free memory and again specify the device underscore vertex buffer memory and again no pointer for the callbacks so now that we've got that done what we're going to do is start implementing the rest of the code. There's a couple of methods that we will need to implement for this. And honestly, there's not much else to it than that. So if we scroll down to where we have the create command pool method. Should have searched for it. I uh, know I feel like it's coming soon. There we go. We'll put it after this because you know that's the way we structured it in the init Vulkan. So we'll just sort of structure it the same way here. So we're going to create a vertex buffer method. So void create vertex buffer. And first of all, we're going to create the info structure. So to do this, it is pretty simple to be fair. All you got to do is I'm sure you've you know done it all before. So let me show you. Let me put VK buffer create info. We're going to call it buffer info, curly braces, semicolon. And what we're going to do now is set the S type, which just sets the type of struct it is expecting. So buffer info dot S type equals VK underscore structure underscore type underscore buffer underscore create underscore info like so. And we're gonna, you know, set the size of the buffer in bytes. So we're gonna say buffer info dot size. 
equal size of vertices and starting off at zero or you may just get the first one and just times it by the vertices dot size and there you have the total size that we need for the buffer so next we're gonna set the usage which you know the purpose is you know the purpose is you know the data in the buffer is going to be used so like what's the purpose for the data in the buffer and it is possible to specify multiple purposes using the bitwise or operator we're just going to set one usage so buffer info dot usage equals vk underscore buffer underscore usage underscore vertex buffer bit like so now that we've got that we're going to set the sharing mode so just like the images in the swap chain that we've previously done the buffers can also be owned by a specific queue family or they can just be shared between multiple at the same time the buffer you know will only be used from the graphics queue so we can basically stick to exclusive access and what that means you just do buffer info dot sharing mode equals vk underscore sharing underscore mode underscore exclusive that's literally it now we get some error here mm -hmm. my bad i meant to get the size of that and then multiply it by the size I was wondering why we was getting a little no, error. So now we can actually try and create the buffer using the create info object. So we just say if, and if it's unsuccessful, we'll throw out some error. Create buffer, and we need to specify the device, reference to the buffer, buffer info that we created. For the callback, we'll put null pointer. And then for the vertex buffer, specify a reference to the vertex buffer that we created towards the top of the file and if this isn't equal to vk underscore success then we'll throw an error std column column runtime error and we'll say failed to create vertex buffer okay so now that we you know the buffer has been created it, but it doesn't actually have any memory assigned to it yet the first step of allocating memory for the buffer is to query the memory requirements so we'll create a vk memory requirements function for mem requirements semicolon and we'll put vk get buffer memory requirements and we'll specify the device in this call the vertex buffer and a reference to the memory requirements that we just created right now so now we have a way to determine the right memory type so we can actually allocate the memory by filling in the you know a vk memory allocate info structure which we're going to create right now. So I'm going to say VK memory allocate allocate info. Call it alloc info semicolon alloc info dot s type. So the type of struct it's expecting equals VK underscore structure underscore type underscore memory underscore allocate info like so put a semicolon there now we are going to set the allocation size and this is going to be in line with the memory requirement size so we're going to put alloc info dot alloc info dot allocation size equals memory memory requirements dot size and just do, do, do. 
it's not liking that for some reason. Oh, don't need parentheses there, my bad. And now what we're gonna do is set the memory type index, which is derived from the memory requirements object, and we'll call a find memory type function, which we'll be implementing very soon. So alloc info dot memory type index equals find memory type mem requirements dot memory type bits vk underscore memory underscore prop property underscore host underscore visible bit and we're just going to or it with vk underscore memory underscore property underscore host underscore coherent bit and that's just giving an error because we have not implemented it yet but we will very soon so we're going to try and allocate the memory and if it fails throw an error so I'm going to say if vk allocate memory and we'll pass in the device pass a reference to alloc info pass a reference to null pointer and pass a, a reference to the vertex buffer memory vk underscore success Throw std colon colon runtime error and I'm going to say fail to allocate vertex buffer memory and so now if the memory allocation was actually successful then we can associate this memory with the buffer using the vk bind of a memory object uh, not object method so we do vk bind buffer memory underscore device underscore device then specify the vertex buffer specify the vertex buffer memory and for the memory offset just put zero and now it is now time to copy the vertex data to the buffer and this is done by applying the buffer memory into cpu accessible memory with the vk map memory again it still seems a bit you know a lot to take in but you know once you set it up you're all good to go for void data and we'll say vk map memory underscore device underscore vertex buffer memory and for the offset put zero for the size we just put buffer info dot size and for the flags we we'll put zero and for the data we just put a reference to data that we just created and now we're going to put mem cpy so mem copy data vertices dot data And we'll say unsigned long long for cast the buffer info dot size to a unsigned long long. Then we're gonna say VK unmap memory underscore device underscore vertex buffer memory semicolon. Now we need to implement the find memory method and this will return an unsigned int find memory type unsigned int type filter and you'll also accept a vk memory vk memory prop memory properties flags uh, 
choice meant to be? Ah, property flags. That was my bad. I spelt it incorrectly. I did the plural instead of the singular. And now we're going to get the physical device memory properties. To do it, we just put VK physical device memory properties mem properties semicolon vk get physical device memory properties and we specify the physical device and reference to mem properties and now we just loop over all of the properties so we say four unsigned int i equals zero i less than mem properties dot memory type count i plus plus and we'll just do a check if type filter and uh, one less less than i and and mm, properties dot memory types i dot property flags and properties if that equals properties um here we go then we'll just return i and otherwise if this is not you know successful we'll throw a runtime error and it will literally be failed to find suitable memory type and we're almost done now all we need to do is scroll down to the create command buffers object where we have actually oh, accidentally deleted the code what we had was before the render pass so this is my bad before the render pass we had a vk command draw method a very basic one we'll be updating that so this is basically all that remains and now we just need to bind the vertex buffer during the rendering operations so to do it this is only four lines of code so we're almost done vk buffer vertex buffer so an array of it equals underscore vertex buffer semicolon vk device size and call this offsets and equals zero vk cmd bind vertex buffers underscore command buffers i and for the first binding we put zero the binding count is only one and for the we specify vertex buffers for v vertex buffers and for offsets we just put offsets almost there we're going to do the vk cmd draw now and for the command buffer we just put underscore command buffers i and then we just do a static cast to unsigned int and we're going to get vertices dot size And now that we've done that, we're going to, for the instance count, we're going to put one, for the vertex start at zero, and the first instance is zero as well. Close parenthesis, semicolon. If I click run, we should hopefully have not only it running without any errors, the triangle should appear again. And ultimately, I'll show you what all of this has led to. So, 
all this. Do, do, do. Any moment now, we should get a triangle. There we go. We got a triangle. That's fine. Forget the anisotropic you know, validation error. We always get that. And now, if I close this down, if I scroll to the top here, because before these were hard coded into the shader files, now they're in our code, we can actually modify them. Imagine if I change, because it's red, green, and blue, imagine if I change the green to 111, which is red, green, and blue all on. When those colors are mixed, you get white. So now the, uh, it's the bottom right corner will now be green. No, not green, white. And bottom left is still blue. Top middle is still red, but the interpolation as a result of that has changed because that there's white there now instead of green. So the colors have interpolated slightly differently. And that is it. So all of this, so we could actually pass data into our graphics cards buffers. So we can change stuff like vertices. We could change, you know, the position as well. So if we did something like 1.0, for example. So obviously this is slightly higher up a more, it's an isosceles triangle now. But again, we're not having to change the shaders, recompile them with, you know, into, you know, SPV files. We can just do it all in code. And that is it. If you have any questions, as usual, feel free to post in the Discord group. There's a link in the description. Over 5,000 members there now. In that Discord group to the Vulcan channel, so feel free to go directly there if you're coming from this video. If you want to check out the source code and the source code of every other video from this series, along with that, there will be working projects so you can download them and get going. Feel free to check out the GitHub page, link in the description as well. And as usual, I look forward to seeing you in the next Vulcan video.